Hey guys, Mr. Macro here. This is lesson 3.2, part one. We're gonna start taking a look at some logarithmic functions. So objective number one, we are going to recognize and evaluate logarithmic functions with a base of A, and then we're gonna use some different properties of logarithms to solve equations. One big thing to remember as we're going through this logarithm stuff is it's important to remember that logarithms and exponential equations are very much so related. If we had a logarithmic equation that said y equals log base a of x, we could take that and rewrite that as the equation x equals a to the y. So let's say we had the logarithmic equation 2 equals log base 3 of 9. We're kind of working with how this is set up. This base a value, if we want to rewrite it as an exponential equation, becomes the base of our exponential. This number over here, this kind of y value that we're looking at becomes the power, and then this x value on the end of the logarithm is what this would be equal to. So we could rewrite this logarithmic equation as three squared equals nine. So here's what we're gonna do. In this first example, we're gonna look at evaluating some logarithmic equations by rewriting them in exponential form. So in this first one, we've got f of x equals log base four of x, and we're gonna use an x value of 16. So f of 16 is equal to log base four of 16. And now we're trying to figure out what this function value is. And in order to do that, I'm gonna think about this as an exponential equation. So this base of four becomes the base of our exponential equation. We don't know really what this answer is, so I'm just gonna leave this power as an unknown value but we do know that this has to equal 16. So we're thinking to ourselves, what power of four lands us at 16? Well, it'd be a squared power. So our function value at 16 is two because that's the power that it takes on this four to get us to 16. On this next one, we're looking at f of x equals log base two of x, and we're gonna use an x value of 64. So log base two of 64 rewriting this as an exponential equation. We're taking two to some power, and that has to equal 64. Well, if we take two to the sixth power, that'll give us 64. So this answer here is gonna be six, because that's the power on this two to get us to 64. Next one says f of x equals log base five of x, and we're gonna use an x value of one. So log base five of one, and we're thinking to ourselves, what power of five is gonna land us at one? Well, we know anything to a zero power is gonna give us one, so I think log base five of one is just zero. Last one we're looking at says f of x equals log base three of x, and we're gonna use an x value of one over 81. So log base three of one over 81, and we're thinking to ourselves, what power of three lands us at one over 81. Since this is a fraction on the right hand side, I'm thinking this is going to be a negative power and three to the negative fourth is one over 81. So our answer here is going to be negative four because that's the power that we need to satisfy that exponential equation. Next thing we're talking about is what's called a common logarithmic function. And these are logarithms that are base 10. So we can either write it as log base 10 or it's just log and it has kind of an implied base 10 on there. And if you look on your calculator, which we're gonna use in just a little bit, this is the log that you would see on the left-hand side. It's a common logarithm. So like I said, we're gonna use our calculator and we are going to look at evaluating this function f of x equals log base 10 of x at a whole bunch of different values. We're gonna look at an x value of 10, 1 3rd, 2.5, and negative two. So here's my calculator. Down along this left-hand side, you'll see that log button. And the first one we said we were gonna do was the log of 10. Hit enter and we get a value of one. If we do that next one, log of one third, we get negative 0.477 about. Log of 2.5 gives us 0.398 if we round that off. And if we do log of negative two, we should get an undefined value. Taking a look at a few properties that logarithms have. Number one here says if we have log base a of one, the answer is always going to be zero. 
because if we were to take this and rewrite it as an exponential equation, it doesn't matter what that base value of a is because if we raise it to a zero power, we're always going to get one as our answer. Next one says if we take log base a of a, the answer we're going to get is one because with that a value, if we raise it to the first power, we're going to get that same exact a value back. There is an inverse property for logarithms. If we take log base a of an exponential that also has a as its base, the answer we're going to get is just whatever that x value power is on that exponential function. We could also rewrite that in exponential form, a raised to the power of log base a of x. And again, we're still just going to get that x answer because logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other. Last one, just like exponential equations had a one-to-one -one property, logarithms also have a one-to-one -one property. So if we've got log base a of x equaling log base a of y, then those x and y values have to be equal to each other. So using a few of those properties, first example says we're looking at log base five of one. So if you think about it as an exponential, five to what power gives us one? Well, on the last page, we said the answer was always going to be zero if we're doing a log of one, no matter what the base is. On this one, we're doing log base square root 11 of the square root of 11. It's like the square root of 11 to what power gives us the square root of 11? Well, it's a first power. Next one is using that inverse property. We have an exponential expression with a base of eight raised to the power of a logarithm with a base of eight. So really those things kind of cancel out and all we have left over is that 30. Last thing we're doing is solving some logarithmic equations using that one to one property. So looking at this first example, I see log base five of x equals log base five of 16. Since we have the same base on our logarithm, really we can just ignore those things. Then our equation just says x equals 16. On the next one, there's no base written, but since there's no base, it's an implied base 10. So we have log of four minus three x equals log of x plus two. Well, just ignore those logarithms since it's the same base and we've got four minus three x equals x plus two. And now we're gonna go through and solve this thing. So I'm going to add this three x over to the right hand side. And then we've got four equals four x plus two subtract the two and we've got two equals four x divide by four and we've got x equals one half. Last example says log base three of x squared plus four equals log base three of 29. Same base on our logarithm so I'm ignoring those things. We've got x squared plus four equals 29. Subtract the four over to the right hand side. We've got x squared equals 25 square root both sides and we've got x equals plus or minus five. That's gonna be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.